Welcome to the Genuine Life Podcast, where we take time to dive deep into conversations, stories, and teachings to help lead people to multiply genuine life in Christ in greater Austin and beyond. Hey everyone, welcome back to another month's episode of the Genuine Life Podcast, where every single month we take time to have conversations around what it means to be a genuine disciple, a genuine follower of Jesus Christ. And so I'm so excited to have Scott DeSanders, our discipleship pastor, back again this month as we discover what it really means to be a disciple and how that works itself out here at Parkway. So Scott, I'm really excited to have this conversation with you today because this is something that we talk about all the time. And I think sometimes when we hear that word disciple, it can become convoluted because it's a word that we hear in the gospels. We see these guys called the disciples. We talk about it at our church of, hey, we want you to be discipled or make disciples. And sometimes it can just kind of get confusing as to what that word means and what it specifically means here at Parkway. So let's just start off for a moment with some of the basics and let's talk about what we mean by a disciple. So maybe you could help us out with that. Yeah, I, I agree. It's It can be sometimes a watered down term when we confuse it for like being a fan of something or like I, I really follow this person on social media or I'm really behind this politician or this kind of author or, or musician or whatever. Like to be a disciple uh, really looks different. It's unique from all of those things because it really means to follow Jesus. You know, we define being a disciple uh, here at Parkway as as a person who trusts and obeys Jesus and then teaches others to do the same. Like it means that I follow Jesus myself, whether I've been doing that my whole life or in recent years, and now I'm going to have an impactful, influential way of doing that with someone else whether that's, you know, one-on-one in a relationship with someone helping another person follow Jesus or, uh, you know, even leading a group of people to do the same. For us, making disciples means following Jesus and then teaching and modeling for other people the same kind of thing. Yeah, no, that's, that's so helpful just to hear that broken down in such a basic way. You know, I think one of the words that we hear a lot just culturally is someone having a mentor or yeah. looking for a mentor in their life. And I think that's a really, really good concept and a good word. But like, how would you differentiate a disciple versus just having a mentor in your life? Yeah, I think it's it's really important to think about that because even years ago, I thought you know, me being discipled by someone else uh, as a Christian just meant like I spent time with that person. I hung out with them. Like if they went to the grocery store, I went to the grocery store with them. And and there's something to be said for that, like actually emulating and watching someone as a role model. But I think really being a disciple of Jesus, especially in the context of doing that around other believers, there's something more intentional about it. It's more concentrated there's more purpose for it so so that's why here we we practice like while it's not a specific study that you do it's not like there's a start and there's a finish and and you have to do kind of a word for word study there is like a period of time where we might walk in discipleship with somebody to model after somebody else or learn from them to watch the way that they live and talk and process out what following Jesus looks like in this specific season and and to do that with regularity. So so again, being a disciple means that I follow Jesus. I learn from Jesus. I I look to him before I look to anything else as a source of truth and wisdom and that I and I'm really walking out my life trying to grow deeper and deeper in my daily patterns of life and my identity. I'm placing it in Jesus and and that I'm learning from others that do the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think one of the things that you drew out there that's really important is a disciple is a disciple of Jesus, that we can be mentored in a lot of things, but a disciple is someone who's following Jesus. And a key differential there is then teaching others to do the same, that yeah. in a mentorship, you're learning from someone and wanting to apply those things, but in a discipleship relationship, you're learning to be a disciple that then makes disciples, yeah. that it's not just for you, it multiplies out, which I think is really, really important. And I know we talk about that a lot. So we've kind of got this what of disciples. Discipleship, and I love how you defined it, a person who trusts and obeys Jesus and then teaches others to do the same. So that's, that's a great what, but why is that so important to us here at Parkway, and why should that be so important to any Christian who follows Jesus? Yeah, I, I think 
that's big because if we aren't really clear on why discipleship is so vital, you know, it does take, it takes focus, it takes time, it takes intentionality, and sometimes it, it takes us out of our comfort zone. So if we're not really clear on why it's important and, and the motivation and drive to do this, oftentimes it will slip under the back burner. So I think for us, like the biggest red hot why we are disciples of Christ and make more disciples is Jesus tells us that. It's some of his final words and what we often call the Great Commission of Matthew 28, when Jesus tells his friends and followers to go and make disciples of all peoples. Like That's some of his parting words, that, that last really big calling he gave to his people before he ascended to heaven to be with the Father, as he said, to go out and make more. Like, it's not just about us. Like, yes, we have a relationship with God, but that's not all he's interested in is just having a whole bunch of individual vertical relationships with people. He wants us to, to help other people to find that same life through Christ and, and experiencing the love of God. And, and so it is when we say making disciples, while it's not some kind of multi-level marketing scheme, it's not a pyramid scheme, it is still a calling from the Lord to go and help other people find that genuine source of life. And, and so for us, it really does look like carrying out that great commission. Um, you know, elsewhere in Scripture in the New Testament, Paul says in 2 Timothy 2 that um, what we've gotten from him, like we should go out and entrust into other people who will do the same. Like we should take what we've learned from Jesus and go and entrust that, invest that and teach others the same things and, and do that with people who will faithfully do that with others as well. Like God wants us to not just hoard what we know of him and the relationship we have with him and the deepening walk we have with Jesus all to ourselves. He wants us to share that with others and teach others to find that same source of life. Yeah, and that's so good because when you look throughout the Gospels, you see Jesus inviting others to come follow him. And as they follow him, see how he lives life, see how he interacts with people, they begin to hear him teach about the kingdom of God and what it means to be a part of the kingdom and how you enter the kingdom through repentance and belief. And that when you become a part of the kingdom, you're given this brand new life, brand new identity. And like you said, right before he goes back to heaven, he says, all authority has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples baptizing them and teaching them. And there's this authority that Jesus has over our lives that tells us to then go and do the same thing that he did in inviting other people to be a part of the kingdom. And so I think when we look back, look at scripture, when we look at Jesus's pattern, like it's pretty clear as to why this should be the number one thing that we give our lives to, because Jesus, who is our king and in as, as our Lord, this is what he modeled for us. And this is the mission that he's given to us. And, you know, I can continue to try to just grow with Jesus every day on my own, almost isolated and do that almost as if I lived on my own little island. But, but how much more powerful is it when we can find encouragement and support with other people and accountability with people that we trust that can, that can help nudge us and guide us and, and, and even teach us through role modeling how to make healthy decisions and how to live biblically and, and how to glorify the Lord more in our daily lives. Like it just gets so much sharper and clearer when we do that in relationship with other people. Yeah. Like we can have that kind of impact. And, and so many of us are where we are because somebody else modeled it for us yeah. or invested into us. So there's a little bit of that kind of pay it forward motivation there too, that what's been done for me and other people that helped disciple me to show me how to follow Jesus. Like I want to do that for others too. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. another part of why we, why we focus on this and practice it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, I want to get into the how in just a moment of like, how do we actually do that? Uh, but before I ask you that question, I just want to think about like, what keeps people like, what are some barriers that keep people from either being discipled or actually taking the next step and making disciples? Maybe you can talk to that for a little bit. 
Yeah, I think one would be, you know, in our in our very Western modern culture, we live in a very like independent way of uh, almost our worldview, our mindset. Like I'll do me, you do you. Mm -hmm. There's very little like I want to help you figure out how to how you can get even more out of the way that you live and and living for Jesus. Well, where I think ever since scripture and, and, you know, God's way has always been that we have that kind of positive impact on others to help point people towards Jesus. But that really does run countercultural to our American mindset of like, mm -hmm. you live on your side of your fence and I'm going to live on my side. And even if it's very different, like I'm going to enjoy the life that I have. So I think that's one thing that keeps us almost like I'll stay in my lane. Yeah. And then there is an aspect where, you know, following Jesus sometimes takes us out of our comfort zone, yeah. not just sometimes it often does. And I think that can be a barrier to discipleship sometimes too, because for me to continue to more deeply walk with Jesus does sometimes mean I'm going to have to let go of things that might have become idols in my life. Maybe, maybe it's a, a, a draw towards comfort. And for you and me to be in a discipleship relationship, for you to help model for me how to let go of my own comfort zone is is tricky. And so I'm going to want to stay separate from that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to want to move towards that. Or, or maybe it's, you know, I, I'm really chalking so much of my life up to growing more significant in worldly matters. And discipleship would ask me to put that to the side. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's I'm really drawn to control in my life and discipleship would want me to release my hands and and so there's some natural barriers there where we just don't want to go sometimes to the places where following Jesus more deeply would take us. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's so true. And, and two, we live in a world that it's like, Hey, if we want to figure something out, let me just watch a YouTube video versus actually like learning life on life from yeah. someone else where we want like a quick fix versus maybe a deeper internal transformation that requires a little bit more time investment. It's true. Discipleship in some ways you could say it's, it's a lifelong thing. Yeah where we're always growing deeper with Christ and, and walking more intimately with him. And even though sometimes we practice discipleship, as we'll talk in a minute, I'm sure, like we sometimes practice it on a more short-term basis in relationships, it still is something that you're right. It's not a, a quick overnight thing. You don't just microwave a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's talk about that. How, how does it play itself out here at Parkway? And, yeah. and what does it look like to even be involved in it? Yeah, at, at Parkway, I would say we're really proud that there's a long legacy of disciple making in our midst. I'd say for many years, uh, people have met together to practice discipleship here. You know, men meeting with men, women with women. Sometimes it's one to one, almost like a mentorship kind of setting. Uh, where I'm going to really intentionally invest in another person and model and teach them and talk it out. Sometimes it's in small groups, you know, two, three, even four people. I, I wouldn't recommend much bigger than that because it can get really inefficient that way. But but we've seen even just in the past couple of years, you know, more than 100 people in the last two years here at Parkway have been practicing discipleship on regular, I would say almost weekly basis is and, and it's really exciting to see that happen um, to see these groups of people start together and really go somewhere together to the place where a group will almost come to maturity where they're saying like we're going to we're going to call this like we've experienced an amazing season of growth together and we're going to say we've completed this not that we're done walking with Christ but like we've really seen this group grow to a place of maturity where, where now I'm ready to turn around and, and maybe even make more disciples with others. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that we've seen here. And it's pretty exciting to mm -hmm. see, you know, for us, discipleship and making disciples, we base it around our four mission measures. It's just questions we ask at Parkway uh, to help us almost diagnose where am I with my walk with Jesus. So, so we ask it in four ways and in discipleship, it's built around these four questions of, am I in the word? Am I, am I learning from God's word? And am I actually applying it in my life? And then the second, am I in the family? Am, am I connected in authentic relationships with other people and even taking risks, uh, not just comfortable relationships? The third would be, am I in the trenches? Am I 
am I finding ways to not just live for myself, but to try to impact others in, in an, etern an eternal way? Mm -hmm. And then fourth, am I in the field? Am I looking for ways to help other people that are far from God grow towards him all around me in close proximity, all the way to the ends of the earth? And so actually our discipleship content that we have, which is never meant, like I said earlier, to be a really intense study. It's more like a, a guide, a, a almost like a flow of conversation mm -hmm. for us from one meeting to the next, but all of those parallel, those four mission measure questions and ask those questions in a way that will help me and you and anyone else that I'm doing this with to, to grow together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's so helpful just to even hear that structure and the simplicity of it. I'm curious, you know, let's say there was someone who was like, man, I, I would love to go through a process like this of learning how to be discipled so that I can make disciples? Like, what would that even look like? How would they do that? Well, one, we have, we, we've formulated that into different experiences. We have one that we're calling Discipleship One, 1 1.0. That's a really foundational approach. I know we've talked about that on this podcast before that really looks at some of the basics of what it means to follow Jesus for someone that's really new in this, or, or I really feel like I haven't progressed very far since I first trusted Christ, or even someone that's just checking it out, you know, maybe wants to know more about what it means to follow Jesus. And then we have one that we call 2.0 that lasts a little bit longer. You know, it might go for a few months together in a group or a one-to-one -one relationship. And it's, it's more just looking at daily living for Jesus and walking through those mission measures. And then we've even developed a really high level version of this for some of our ministry leaders or people that are seasoned followers of Jesus, been really walking with the Lord for years that, that still want to take it to the next level and grow to the deepest places of, of being a disciple. And, and that process will take the better part of a year. We've, we've got a really cool guide there that takes the conversation to some really awesome places. I would say for someone that's interested in this, I would almost approach it a couple ways. First, if you're a part of our church, or even if you're not, if you're in an, another church environment, look for the people that are already connected to you. Maybe someone that, that's already been walking with Jesus for a while. Maybe they're just a little bit further down that journey. Uh, and maybe ask them, what would it look like for us to practice discipleship together? You know, would you be willing to do discipleship with me? Or maybe it's on the other end where I'm going to start to look around for people that I might invest some time into and ask some people, hey, what would you think about us practicing discipleship together? I'd love to help walk through this with you. And then beyond that, we do our best to help people um, you know, if, if I'm not connected to too many others, or I don't really know how to get past the starting point of this, there's times that we can help match people together to say like, Hey, based on where you are in your walk with Christ and, and even maybe what your life looks like and your availability, what would it look like to let me introduce you to this other person? And y'all talk out if, if it would make sense for you guys to meet together. I know that sounds a little like matchmaking. And so it's, it's not guaranteed to work perfectly or always be a right fit, but we still do try to practice that. But I wouldn't pass beyond where we started there with, I always encourage people, look at the sphere of relationships in your life. Or if you're a part of Parkway, who are some other people around you? Maybe it's in a life group with you or in a ministry where you're serving that you might look for discipleship already right there with people you know. Yeah. Scott, I, I'm curious if, if you could just say a word to to the person who's listening right now that maybe they've never been through like discipleship here at Parkway or maybe they're still getting used to what this would look like like what encouragement would you have for them today of you know what what would be their next step i would say first start to pray about this you mm -hmm. know because just asking God to increase my heart for this or really show me through the Holy Spirit that this is a, a really right next step that I want to take. And, and then even asking God, could you even provide, like, show me if there's a person in my life that I might ask about this mm -hmm. or, or talk to. Would you just show me a, a next step or a, a path forward to, to maybe get going with this? And then if you don't know where else to start, then come talk to us. I mean, I'm at Parkway, I'm the pastor of discipleship. I would love nothing more than to help people explore some of those next steps or mm -hmm. to dream or imagine or pray with them about where you could get started with mm -hmm. this. But 
but don't don't bypass talking to God and just asking him to show me God how would you help me to grow as a disciple as a follower of you and your son yeah and then you know if if you're you're maybe getting going or you're kind of talking this out I think what it's going to take to make the best discipleship experience is being willing to invest some time you know we we see people meeting in discipleship finding a regular cadence I really recommend doing that on a weekly basis or at the very least, maybe a bi-weekly every other week. I think less frequently, it can get a little tricky to have consistency there or to stay really up on things or to show up for each other, or remember what, what we're praying for for each other. So you need to meet on a regular basis. And, and I think consistency really is key. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of being in and out and meeting one time and then back and off the next time can get really tricky. So being able to say like, I'm going to commit with this other person to meeting on a regular basis for a long time. And, and I'm going to bring honesty and, and an authentic version of myself where I'm going to be transparent with what I'm going through, where Mm -hmm. I'm seeing success and celebrations and where I'm, you know, feeling challenged, being able to pray through that together and be vulnerable, invite someone else into that process can be really, really life changing. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. And I, you know, I'm, I'm also right now thinking of the person who maybe they've been discipled, but they've never taken that step to invest and then make disciples. And it could be because they had a bad experience or it could be because they're afraid of taking that step. They don't feel like they have enough of their stuff together to be able to do that. Maybe just give some encouragement to that person. Well, just quite obviously to speak against that, yeah. none of us have all the answers. None yeah. of us have it all together. And and I totally get that. We feel that pressure of, I need to know the Bible backwards and forwards to be able to disciple somebody else or, or to help lead someone else spiritually, or I have to know all the answers to the tough questions. And that's just flat out not true. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's so much more helpful to somebody if they've got a tough question or, or are needing some guidance and something to say, you know, right now, I don't even know how to help with that, but I'm going to invest some time into looking at that with you. Like I want to explore the answer to that question with you. You know, sometimes for us to have a disciple making impact on someone else, the best we have to offer is our realness. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when we're having good seasons and hard seasons, like being able to model how we continue to follow Jesus through the highs and the lows mm-hmm. is the most helpful thing. Not some kind of artificial veneer of I have everything together and so I'm going to be able to help you the best. Like that's actually not true. Yeah. And then I would just encourage a person like that to if you feel like you're kind of sitting on the bench, like you're walking with Jesus but haven't been able to have that kind of disciple making impact on someone else like Pray about an opportunity to get off the bench and get going. And if there's something that we can do as the church to help equip you or or to pray with you, to help you feel confident to do that, we're we're down for that. But but God has so much in store for you if you just try it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so good to just think about because as as followers of Jesus, like this is what he's called us to, because his heart is for every man, woman, and child to have an opportunity to respond to his free gift of salvation and to walk with him into eternity. And as the church, as followers of Jesus, that's the greatest gift that we can give to people is that offer of the gospel, but then the gospel that transforms their lives to the rest of their life to help yeah. walk through that uh, with people. In fact, as we think about like who we are as followers of Jesus, like this is part of our identity is we are disciples who make disciples. And so, you know, if we're sitting on the bench, if we're not actually living that out, then we're not living out who God's called us to be, who he's created us and hardwired us to be as his followers. And so I just want to say, hey, Scott, thanks so much for engaging in this conversation. Thank you for what you do. And and thank you guys so much for listening in to this episode, because this is a really important episode. And I want to just encourage you that if you have never been discipled, please, we would love to help walk with you through what it looks like to be a person who trusts and follows Jesus and teaches others to do the same. And if you have never discipled someone before and you want help with that, we want to walk with you because this is who we've been called 
to be. And I can't wait to see us as a church here at Parkway continue to grow as disciples of Jesus and continue to multiply as disciple makers so that every man, woman, and child has an opportunity to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I just want to say thank you again so much for tuning in to another episode of the Genuine Life Podcast, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you.